Yo, Floyd, I was in Dubai with you. They opened up a store and gave us the whole store for free. Yeah, yeah. We never yeah. paid a dollar. <laughs> I did. went with you. They don't do that for me. I went yeah. with you. We took the whole fucking yeah. store for free. Yeah. It's for free. Yeah. So, um, Joe, I still, you know, I just don't do a lot of, you know, as uh, far as like, I don't show everybody everything. Joe, do I still got my fifty-two million dollar house in Beverly Hills? Absolutely. The house, the, the house I'm in right now, the big boy mansion. Do I still got it? Yeah, absolutely. But guess what? I had I built a palace. I built the um. A, 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 my palace is over thirty thousand square feet. You know, I built that a couple years ago, and that got three kitchens, five laundry rooms, probably like uh, seventeen bathrooms. 12 bedrooms. So, you know, I still got a hundred. Is, is it safe to say, yo, Floyd, is it, is it safe to say that's the most expensive gift you bought yourself? Well, I think my, my most expensive gift is probably um, my Beverly Hills house. But, you know, they say it's about working smarter, not harder. So, you know, I still got, I still got the Beverly Hills house. And um, they, they wanted 52 for it. But you know, I, I I worked it and got it, and I still you know, I got the palace. I still got my house. Still got all my houses in Miami. Still got still got all my property in New York. So like I said, I'm, like I said before, I was smart with my money. I know we've been we've been very on an up note. I know recently, uh, Uncle Roger passed and Baby Mama passed. Yes. And um, may they rest in peace. Uh. How? My at my pilot, my pilot on here. One of my pilots. <laughs> One of your pilots from the yeah, plane. AJ. <laughs> That's that cool shit right there, Floyd. Yeah. Where you can say your pilot is in this motherfucker. Let me tell you something, Floyd. I know it's been hard. Are, are you okay and everything? Have you? Are you? We're dealing with this because you know I. You know I went through depression when my sister passed and pawn and oh, you man. know. Have you been able to to like? You know, because I know these are both two important people to you. Really, really important people to you. Well, you know, the thing is this. Um, my daughter, I mean, my children mother. You know, we got one daughter and two boys. We knew each other 24 years. And um, even like within our, within our relationship, I mean, you heard so many different things. Whereas... Um, my thing is always don't judge me for hearsay. Ju judge me for what you see. You know, and as far as my feelings for her, love her unconditional. No I've never been what. around you and her. No yes. matter what. No matter what. No matter. She love you to death too. Yes. I, I'm there. I've been there. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, we go through ups and downs in life, and I will always love her. And she gave me three. We we gave each other. We gave each other three gifts, which was the children. Those were blessings from God. And uh, may she rest in peace. You know, I will always uh, love her. And um, I truly believe we'll meet again. Yeah. And as far as, you know, with my Uncle Roger. Um, he was the man. Brother, uh, uncle, father figure. Everything wrapped in one. Cool dude, cool dude. We, you know, actually we fought professional because I, I was a pro so long. We fought professional at the same time. So um, let me tell you something. I saw a fight. I don't know what the fight was, and I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chad. You was almost losing. I'm gonna keep what? it real with you. It was like around. Well, it wasn't the normal Floyd Mayweather. It was around the sixth round. You switched up your whole style in that fight, and you whipped him. Right? I forget who it was. And at that point, I knew your IQ was so incredible in boxing because you figured out this guy was, he was on, and you figured it out. And I said to myself, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, been bro you, how much tape you've seen of champions in boxing? Because I seen you fight a whole nother fight you never fought in your life. And that was it. You figured them out. How much take? How much your father, your your uncle? 
how much videos they showed you when you was a little kid to prepare you for a moment like that? Well, you know, throughout my career, just from the beginning, you know, when I was a, a small kid from, from day one, all I did was eat, sleep, and drink boxing, you know, you know, love boxing. Watched every legendary champion that paved the way for me to be where I'm at. And like I said before, they did it their way, I did it my way. But did I did I study a lot of fighters? Absolutely. I just I love the sport. I love the art. And once I got once I turned professional, um, it was no it was no looking back. I knew I didn't have to study any film of any fighter because I knew that I was going to be TBE once I retired from the sport. Who was your toughest fight? Would you say? Um, we know you beat them all. Uh, uh, who it, was it, your toughest? Who who you fought? Did you say? But I'm I'm, I'm 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 hey Joe. I'm gonna answer this two different ways, okay? Because I, I somebody asked me that question the other day, and I said to myself, Do it really matter who was the toughest? All the results was the same. No, all of you. I know you beat them, but. Who was you fighting? And you was like, holy shit. I didn't but know. But so I gotta ask you a question, Joe. Now, yeah. that's like you saying, you can go to an arena overseas or anywhere. You can have 100,000, but then you can perform for 10 people. If the money is the same, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. But. Okay, okay. So if you wanna ask me, I'm gonna say this kid who had a lot of losses named Emmanuel Augustus, this black fighter. Real, real tough, gritty, tough guy came to fight, and he brought the smoke. I know people try to say you don't fight the toughest. I know the guy, Gennaro Hernandez, when you fight, fought him very young, he was the hardest-hitting fighter in boxing, and you killed him for the belt. Well, I, well he, you actually, it's crazy, because when I was... 16, I had a poster on my wall, because you remember when we was young, we used to hang posters on our wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the, the young kids. Right on. No heavy D. I had heavy D. Running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Muhammad Ali, everybody. I had, I had a poster right above, uh, right above my head. Gennaro Chicanita Hernandez. And I used to watch him on TV fight. And I said, nobody will beat that guy. I was 16. I could have been like 16, 15. Five years later, I was across from that guy fighting for the championship. And Yo, then that's he, unreal. Ended, he ended up passing away. I ended, up, I ended up taking care of his funeral and um, still, you know, communicating with his family wow. because he's the first guy that gave me my chance. When I was actually, I was ranked number eight. And he was the world champion and he didn't have to give me a, a shot, but fighting me was... That's at that particular time was his big money fight. So we made it happen. That's how I feel, man. Whether I had KRS yesterday, he's my idol. And I told him about a time when I wasn't doing so good. And he came to me and said, Joe, I know you ain't doing good. Come with me on tour. You could do flow, Joe. You hype me up and I throw you a couple of bucks. And I'm forever in debt to him 20-something years later. I love him because... He gave me a chance, you know what I mean? He helped me feed my family when I needed it. Um, I'm the same way. I was at the Arturo Gotti fight. I seen you. <laughs> Everybody thought you would run. And you brought the noise. And I love Arturo Gotti as a fighter. Rest in peace. May he rest in peace. You, you, everybody thought you was going to run, and you brought the noise. Uh um, you know, a lot, a lot of these guys that, you know, a lot of my big fights, a lot of these guys passed away. So, you know, I know. Diego that's Gonzalez, why. I was another fan of Diego. Yes, he that's why away. you never, if you notice, you never see me post a fight of, on my, on my, none of my social media pages of me and Arturo Gotti, me and Diego Corrales, or me and Gennaro Chicanisa Hernandez. There's respect to their family members, to their kids. I just don't do it. I know, I know. But I was there, and uh, it was a real, real, uh, it was a real, real, they, they, man, I mean, a lot of, let's put it this way, a lot of Italians lost a lot of money that night. <laughs> I know, I know. They, they, they bet the fucking house. They bet everything. Because Arturo, he was a tough guy. 
and you came in there and you went to work. I love Arturo Gatti. I love Diego Corrales. Uh, I love them as fighters. They were, they were really, really, really good fighters. Uh, you always give the illusion of living the lifestyle, hanging out in the club, having a great time. But I have never seen you sip a glass of liquor no. in my life. I watch you in the club buy 100 bottles, but you don't sip that. Tell these younger fighters, because they all watch it, how important it is to take care of your body, to, take, to, to, to not drink, to not abuse your body, if you want to be champ, become champ, and stay champ in the game. You can't, you can't just live it for a few months or a few weeks. This boxing really is, it's really a lifestyle, period. And I just truly believe in sacrificing. You got to make certain sacrifices and it will pay, it will pay off. I'm where I'm at because I made sacrifices. Everything ain't for everybody like we talked about. And that's why I'm still living a great life. And that's why I'm still in a, basically in a fight game. And, you know, as far as with Mayweather Promotions, as well as PBC, um, I think we're working with, right now we have somewhere upwards of between 200 and 300 fighters.